Hey developers, so today we're going to do something cool. We are looking at a feature of Vue 3 that you should probably know. Okay, so this feature is all about V model. So we're going to look at the changes that V model has done in Vue 3. So if you guys like these type of videos, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe and leave a comment below and let me know what you think about it. Oh yeah, and I do have a course on Vue 3. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description and it'll also be one of the comments. But let's uh, jump into Vue 3. Okay, so I have this presentation here on Vue 3 V model. So this is kind of neat. We have a lot of really cool features with Vue 3. If you don't know, Vue 3 is already out. It's been out for a little bit of while now. So this is a presentation that I did a little while back. So uh, I'm just going to go over it with you guys. I actually had it inside one of my courses, but I have been updating it and changing it. And... I just want to explain these changes. Now, one of the biggest changes to Vue 3 is the Composition API. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but I will give examples of how to use the V model inside Vue 3. And now I will silence my phone. Okay, sorry about that. You know, that's the dangers of doing recording with my phone nearby. Okay, so what is V model? So let's, let's talk about it. So V model is a way to do usually two-way data binding. So I, I've heard people talk about two-way data binding, and I know there is not a consensus of if it's good or, or not, but there's a way you can do it. So if you have text inputs or text areas, et cetera, and you set this V model attribute, that it automatically syncs. So that way, when the data in this input changes, it also changes inside the, the actual uh, whatever variable you bind it to. And if you change the, the variable, what you bind it to, it changes the input. So that's what kind of the way the two-way data binding works. You can put them also on components too, which we'll talk more about. And that's some of the changes you'll see with view three. But one of the things that uh, people kind of get confused for, it is really, um, it is very much syntactic sugar. So it's basically doing a bind. It's also watching for different events and then it's just making changes when those th two things happen. And here's a stack blitz for it. Okay, so you can see here, here is the basic example of, of actually, here's our hello world here, which um, we're not gonna worry about, but here's the app view. I have this click event. I have this input here. It has a V model equals value and it's type equal text. So that way when you press it here, you can see it's updated in both places. And if you hit this press me button, it changes it to text. So you can see here, I'm updating it inside the code where it says this dot value equals test. And, and when I do this click event right here, this button, it triggers this method, this update text and it updates, but it also is two way data bound. So when this value changes, it also changes here. So you can see here, I'm able to change it in the code, but it also is bound to this value here. So when this value changes, it gets changed. Um, it gets changed. So this is kind of the idea of two way data binding. So the other idea is one-way data binding. In that case, we would, um, if you did this update value, it wouldn't necessarily, we can make it so it doesn't um, update this value in real time because it's not two-way data bound. Maybe you only initially have the value set when the app loads, but it doesn't get changed after that. And so V model is, like I said, syntactic sugar. So when using with inputs, V model is syntactic sugar for type equals text v bind colon value or you can put colon value equals name two and then on the input so when any input changes happen input events changes happen then the name two which is what we bound to the value gets updated with the event dot target dot value and syntactic sugar is just a way to say that it's kind of a shorthand for this other way of doing it uh, so it's you could type this long string out every time you wanted to use v model but it's just much easier typing in v-model directive, as you can see here, right here, right there. So that's kind of what they mean by that. So how to do two-way data binding in view two. So we want to kind of take a look at what we're doing in view two and understand how it changed in view three. So a few ways of doing it, you could use view, view model or v-model, but you can only add in v-model for one per component. So now we're talking about doing it with components instead of just putting on an input or text array. So if you want to actually do V model, you can have values passed in from a component, from a parent component to a child component, and then have that child component be able to update it from the parent component. Because if you use props, so if you guys, by the way, if this is really confusing right now, I do talk a little fast, you know, make, maybe put this in 0.5 or slow down the video for a second. But when you're using props, that's when you're passing information from a parent component to a child component, 
that is one way data bound. So if you try to change the information that came from the parent to the component, you're going to get a big error in the console and it's not going to work right. Now that's one confusion that I've heard some people explain two way data binding. They think that view is two way data bound all, everywhere and, and that's not necessarily true. It's only data bound when you use this V model attribute. But if you use the V model on a component, you can make that two way data binding. You actually can push events up from the child back to the parent and make sure that they're both in sync. Another thing you can use this dot sync, which is a view twoism that allows you to do the same thing, but you can use multiple. Like if you have multiple things you're passing in inside a component, you can use this dot sync, or you just bind the values and emit events. So you can uh, do that as well, which I'm not going to show in this example, but that's one way of doing it as well. So here, here is, well, I do have some examples, uh, but I'll, I'll show you here. Some component V model info text. So right there, this is like the quintessential way in view two to do it. And, and it's very similar in view three and we'll take a look. And that's syntactic sugar that you have this value here and then you're grabbing events and you're assigning it. Props will always be passed by value. Events will always be named input. Um, well, let me rephrase this. When you're using V model, you actually, the events will be called, uh, the actual events will, the prop will actually be called value. So when you actually, you have to always in view, you have to set the name of the props and set like a list and array of them. And it's always going to be called value if you use this V model. And the input event will always be named input. So you can see here inside your sum component, you would have this value of input emit input event dot target dot value. You can use models to overwrite prop names. So you would have, uh, this is a way, this at input is the event name inside your child component. I don't want to get you too confused, but it's worth understanding where we're coming from. And if you're still in view two, this is a good refresher. Dot sync was used to help to do a two way data binding for a prop in addition to the V model. You use the pattern update colon my prop name. So the parent component, you would have some component info text dot sync info text. So this is how you would kind of instead of using vmodel, you would do it like this and you actually put the name. And then inside the child component, you would do this uh, arrow function where you emit and then use update colon and then the name of the text here, info text. And this update is like a reserve keyword um, that it knows that this is an update event for this info text. So info update and colon info text means it's going to update whatever you passed in through here. And then you can pass what you're passing in, which is case would do the event target value. So view 3v model. So this is a little different. And by the way, this is a kind of a, not a great example. Um, if you're hard, having a hard time visualizing it, I apologize. But just realize that typically when you look at view 2 apps, people use v model or dot sync. And dot sync is great if you have multiple things you're passing in from a child into a child component and you need to update things. And you want to update things back to the parent component. So in the model case, you have two types of syntax. You have this V model, which you can have info text, or you do V model colon, and then info text equals info text. So if you do V model equals info text, since it's in syntactic sugar for update uh, model value, you're, you're probably thinking, where's this model value? We'll show that in a second. For example, I have some examples for this to make it more concrete. And then you can say event. So the event being passed in and the v model info text equals info text syntactic sugar for doing it this way so v model continued also supports custom modifiers so now you can do some component v dot model dot capitalize that's supposed to be a dash sorry v dash model dot so just like this one v dash model sorry this is a typo v dash model and then uh, dot capitalize info text so let's let's see that. So you're probably thinking, what are modifiers? So you can have ways you can check inside your child component if there's a modifier attached to the V model, and then you can do different things, like you can make things capitalized. Okay, so in this this one right here, we have this app view, and we have this simple child component, and we're passing in this parent text, which we're grabbing from this input, this this input. So this parent text right here. Then we're passing it into the parent text down here. So it's passing it into here. And so, by the way, you see here that this props name is model value. And you're probably like, well, that's kind of weird. What is that? Well, since, we, um, since we're using this V model and we're only passing one in, the default name is model 
with capital V, model value. So you have to, inside here, you have to declare model value because you're using V model. And then you can bind volume, volume model value to this text input. And then you can say on every input change, we're gonna emit, now update colon model value, this is reserved. And this will essentially emit an event from your child component to your parent component. So you can see here, if I change this to hi Eric, you can see the parent component is changing. So I have changed the values that came from the child component and passed it back onto the parent component and they're both in sync now. So they're two way data bound. So that's the first way of doing it. Second way of doing it. So we have, this is the one where you have multiple values. I'll go to the app view. So now we have this V model parent text and more info. Now this more info is just a text that says more info text. So you can see right here. And then we have this parent text, which is bound to this input. So if I change this input right here, you can see now it's changing it from the top and bottom. And just like the example before, we have this parent text into this. This is this child component right here at the bottom, which you can't really see because I'm in the way. So right at the bottom, there's this child text. If I change it here, you can see here, it's actually changing here at the top. So you can see here that both are changing because we have it bound and we're doing this. You can see it's different now and still using update value. We use the name that we called it here since we did colon parent text. Now it's update colon parent text instead of model value because now we have actual names associated and this makes way more sense. This is the way I would recommend you do it. Actually assign a name to it and then we're passing the event.target value. Now you can see here I also have this uh, parent, a more info text that I passed in and if you look at this uh, parent text, I'm not doing anything with it, but I did have a, a button here. If you press it, it presses this button here, which um, emits events back up to the parent component. And it's gonna change more info and change it to new text from child. So if I click here, if I click this button here, now you can see it updated the parent text. And so now we're two-way data bound between those two. And then finally, this example is how to use modifier. So I have this modifier dot uppercase. Remember I'm using V model, so now I have that model value again, but I have this uppercase. So I have in here, I have this model value, I have that assigned, but I have another thing, another prop that was passed down called model that modifiers. That's what this dot uppercase is. So now I can actually access model, model modifiers, and if you look at it, and I actually uh, it's an object and it has this uppercase true. So I can check for it. You can see right here in this text, which I can make it a little bit bigger. I can't, maybe I can make it a little bigger. You see here, I'm checking for it. Um, when you hit this button here, I have an input type, but I also have this emit event. So every time you type, it emits an event to this emit event function, this method, and it grabs the value and then it checks to see if model modifier uppercase is true. And if it's true, then it ch puts it to uppercase and it sends it back. So what you could do here is, okay, if I type in Eric here, it looks fine. But if I type Eric down here, it sends it back as uppercase back to the parent because it saw this modifier here. But if this modifier was, I don't know, not there at all, then it would, it would be false and this would be lowercase. So that's how modifiers work. It's almost like a secret mod, it's a secret prop that gets added in. And in this case, since we don't have a name, it's called model and we just have modifiers there. So that's a lot of information. I hope you guys learned a lot. If this was too quick, let me know in the comments below if this was confusing. Um, but I, I just wanted to give a great, ex a pretty in-depth explanation of vModel. And I think there's probably even more stuff we can go over vModel. So if you guys are interested, leave a comment below. But yeah, let me know how it goes. Appreciate it and take care.